Okay, thank you very much, Kat and everybody. Hello, welcome to our session for two amazing task forces that we'll be sharing with you today. And we have um, specifically one task force that is about unaccompanied and separated children task force. And sh this task force is led by IRC and UNHCR. Shortly, you will hear um, about details of what this task force is doing. The second group that we'll be sharing with you um, is the Family Strengthening Task Force. This task force is led by Save the Children and Poor Child Netherlands. And you will hear from Sana, Azara, and Oksana to know more about these groups. And first, let us briefly introduce the groups. So, Cliff, can I ask you to share briefly what your group is about? Yeah, hey, thank you. Uh, so my name is Cliff. I'm uh, co-leading the UAC task force together with uh, Jerry from I IRC, who is unfortunately unable to be here today. Um, so uh, the UAC task force, uh, as you know, is, a, is one of the uh, task forces within the Alliance. Uh, but before talking about that, I just want to highlight uh, family separation remains uh, one of the enduring or uh, critical protection risks for children, be it in humanitarian settings, or in uh, uh, protracted uh, displacement settings. Um, you can take any examples on recent times, uh, be it, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the situation relating to Afghanistan or uh, Ethiopia, Mozambique. And uh, even if you look at uh, children on the move uh, in uh, the Central Mediterranean, in uh, the Americas, uh, family separation, uh, unaccompanied separate children is, uh, is a continuing to be an uh, issue that uh, the child community communities uh, is faced with. Um, being separated uh, puts children at heightened risk. Uh, this can be uh, in the form of abuse, violence, uh, torture, uh, trafficking, um, sexual and gender-based violence, detention, um, recruitment. You can name uh, as many protection risks where these heighten because of their separation from their uh, families. Um, the U.S. Task Force, of course, is in the forefront of uh, responding to uh, the protection risks of unaccompanied separated children, looking starting from uh, prevention of family separation, ensuring quality alternative care, and uh, family tracing and reunification. Um, the, the work of uh, the child parent community and the coordination, of course, uh, can be traced back to the work in relation to responding to family separation as well. Um, that kind of collaboration is critical and needed, and uh, we feel that we need to continue in that process. Uh, another important area, of course, uh, the link with family strengthening uh, in the area of uh, prevention uh, alternative care and the reintegration of children uh, once they are reunified with their families. Um, so the USC task force has put out a number of products, uh, the field handbook and the um, toolkit are uh, a few, but uh, during COVID uh, we uh, issued guidance on uh, family tracing and reunification, work closely with other uh, task force uh, and uh, working groups. And in uh, the coming months and years, we have many exciting things planned. Uh, this includes uh, the rollout of uh, these guidance, uh, developing uh, uh, further guidance on uh, detention and migration, um, guidance on cash and, uh, and USC. So uh, as you see, you know, many different things in the pipeline and we'll be really excited to have you come and listen and contribute uh, with your ideas and even join the USC task force. Over. Thank you very much, Cliff. Um, uh, and uh, great segue, bringing the connection with um, the Family Strengthening Task Force. Um, so please, Sarah, Oksana, introduce your task force. Thank you so much. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Hummel from Save the Children. And I'm here with Oksana Stolnikova from War Child Holland. We are the co-leads of the Family Strengthening Task Force, um, which is a task force that focuses obviously on family strengthening. Um, however, family strengthening is a very broad term. Um, so a lot of the core members of the Family Strengthening Task Force um, come from organizations where their work primarily focuses 
either on child protection, MHPSS, or psychosocial support, often with a focus on parent and caregiver support programming, um, sometimes with broader, more holistic family strengthening work as well. And as a result of that, over the last two years, within the Family Strengthening Task Force, we have started to broaden our definition of family strengthening to be much more multi-sectoral. So we've started to look at family strengthening activities and approaches that come not only from child protection and MHPSS, but also come from fields such as education, um, early childhood, nutrition, health, uh, as well as uh, broader cross-sectoral approaches such as um, addressing gender-based violence. So we are a task force that um, comes together to share resources, to facilitate webinars on topics related to family strengthening, and to look for opportunities to collaborate on new programming or research. Our main activity over this last year has been um, to update our um, current mapping of global resources to support family strengthening. The first mapping was developed by the task force in 2007. And so over the last year, we've undergone um, a significant update to it, which not only updated the existing tools and resources to more current additions, but also took a more multi-sectoral lens and added in um, many more resources um, related to family strengthening through all of the different sectors. Um, so uh, we will be actually finalizing that mapping document in the next two weeks um, at our annual meeting and we will be sharing it across the Alliance in the month of November and hopefully holding a webinar in late November or early December um, to present the mapping. Um, we will talk a little bit uh, more about all of our key activities later in this session and Oksana will, will lead that part. So thank you very much, happy to be with you um, and happy to be um, here together um, with another task force that is so directly linked to, to the, 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 the technical area that, that we focus on. Thank you, Sarah. Um, you can see, um, uh, friends, how interesting discussions is anticipated today. So let's not be late for further. Cliff, may I invite you to go deeper and open up um, the conversation with your task group? Thank you. Um, are we going to show the slide? Yeah, next one, please. Great. So I just want to expand on uh, the work that we are doing, as we uh, explained in the page. Um, so family separation, as I said, I mean, it's one of the key uh, protection risks. Uh, uh, many of us uh, have been working with uh, child protection, have ex ex uh, experienced this uh, in our fields of work. Um, and uh, much needs to be done in this area to ensure that uh, children are uh, prevention of separation, uh, appropriate alternative care is found uh, through uh, linkages with uh, um, case management uh, and uh, ensuring that family tracing and reunification are also uh, explored. Um, ensuring alternative care, of course, uh, requires that we uh, not only work with uh, with uh, the case management task force, but also, for instance, uh, uh, the work done by uh, the community-based uh, child protection uh, colleagues are also critical. Uh, family tracing and reunification, uh, again, one of the most uh, difficult element, especially when it comes to uh, cross-border uh, displacements. Um, we also have seen um, children having been separated prior to a humanitarian crisis, in which case uh, uh, returning children to their families uh, proves to be quite significantly difficult. Um, there is a lot to do in this area, and I think uh, the U.S. Task Force has been uh, engaging with a number of uh, task forces and uh, working groups in, in developing ways forward in this area. Um, in terms of uh, reunification, again, once uh, family tracing 
is completed and uh, it is uh, found to be in the child's best interest to be reunified with their families and uh, the work doesn't stop there uh, certainly uh, having been separated for many years means that uh, the relationships may have been strained. Uh, children would have developed into uh, with new views and uh, ideas that makes it uh, quite difficult to come back into their families as well. So uh, ensuring that uh, uh, we, we focus on these areas are also quite important. Uh, next one, please. Um, so that's why I think uh, this, this uh, call uh, session is quite an important and uh, interesting one for us as well from uh, uh, the USC task force. Uh, we feel, and they, of course, uh, we want to learn uh, at the same time, we feel that uh, um, stronger families uh, means that uh, the instances of family separation could be reduced, um, especially uh, in terms of preparation, uh, prepa uh, uh, and planning um, in terms of alternative care, as many of us know that not all uh, alternative care are safe and uh, protective to children. Children uh, who are unaccompanied separated may feel discrimination within the same household. Uh, they may experience other forms of protection risks as well. So um, working with uh, and uh, building on the work that is done by the family uh, strengthening uh, piece of work is quite important for uh, quality and safe and loving family uh, based alternative care for unaccompanied and separated children. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, reintegration of uh, children once they have been uh, reunified with their parents are also quite important. Uh, we feel that uh, much needs to be done. It's an area of work that we need to explore further. And uh, we would be very keen to also uh, discuss and engage with uh, those who are uh, here and uh, outside of uh, this, uh, this meeting to, to identify ways forward. Uh, next one, please. So just to talk a little bit about the activities, I mentioned this earlier on. Uh, we said, as I said, uh, in the in the backdrop of COVID-19, uh, we were all taken up by, uh, by uh, how things quickly evolved and uh, the UFC task force uh, not only did contribute to uh, the various uh, pieces of work and documentation and guidance that came out from uh, the Alliance, uh, but we also developed a specific uh, guidance uh, on family tracing and reunification during infectious disease. Um, the UAC handbook and toolkit is uh, a few years old, uh, but uh, what we are learning is that there is a great uh, need for uh, wider dissemination uh, and uh, while, while the task force itself uh, will organize a number of uh, webinars and uh, processes to, to introduce and reintroduce uh, these, uh, these guidance, uh, we would want to forge relationships uh, with the frontline workers, uh, organizations at the, at the community level uh, to ensure that these guidance are widely disseminated. Um, and uh, another piece of work that we've been doing in 2021 is to contribute to the case management training package that many of you may have heard of uh, in the previous uh, marketplace sessions, um, especially uh, as it focuses on uh, UASC and alternative care. Uh, in 2022, uh, just listed a few things here, uh, and uh, in fact, this piece of work will start already now, uh, is uh, the development of a prevention module for the UAC uh, training of trainer package. And this is already available, but we want to include a prevention module to this. Uh, so we'll be uh, wanting to uh, brainstorm and hear more from uh, colleagues in the field as well. Uh, once it's uh, updated, of course, uh, it will be disseminated widely. Um, we also plan on putting together an advocacy note on UASC uh, related migration and detention uh, situation, um, especially uh, as, as children cross borders and uh, as, well, as well as while they are displaced within their own countries. Um, as I mentioned, we want to map out uh, the various uh, regional and country level fora that works on USC so that we can ensure that what we are producing are speaking to the needs as well as uh, are, uh, we are able to disseminate widely these documents. And, and finally, another guide on uh, cash-based interventions in USC, especially as it applies to 
uh, families hosting uh, unaccompanied separate children, uh, families uh, reunifying with unaccompanied separate children, and indeed, uh, in some instances, uh, unaccompanied and separate children who are uh, living independently uh, in small groups and so on. So uh, there's much work to do, and um, it's quite exciting, of course, for us, and uh, we'll be more than eager to hear more from you, some ideas and, uh, and how you can contribute as well. Well, that's me. Thank you, Cliff. Um, you can see that a lot is happening in, in uh, this task force, and you will have chance to explore a little bit more, ask questions, engage um, with the task force as we go to separate groups, breakout rooms a little bit later. But before doing that, um, uh, let's hear Sarah, Oksana, if you want to add uh, something more related to um, issues of family separation, and please, after that, invite participants to contribute their ideas how we can prevent and address different child protection issues, as well as family separation issues. Sarah, Oksana. Hi, uh, I'd like to share um, um, uh, what uh, our activities uh, for this year, uh, family strengthening uh, activities and um, uh, share also with you planning uh, for, for the next year. Hoping that that can uh, invite you to discuss and maybe invite you to share some ideas of what you like task force to do in the next year. So as Sarah mentioned already, one of the main ta the main task for this year was uh, reviewing and finalization of the mapping of the family strengthening resources. Um, as Sarah said already, uh, we're not only adding to the toolbox of the family strengthening interventions and tools in this mapping, but also hoping to expand family strengthening uh, focus by including interventions from other sectors. We all know that family strengthening doesn't happen exclusively with child protection and uh, psychosocial support. In fact, we know that family <laughs> strengthening happens in many places, work, schools, healthcare, facilities, name it. Uh, you cannot look at the families. You cannot imagine families existing separately from their socio-ecological environment. So we really hope that this mapping will help to uh, contribute to making family strengthening programming more integrated and more holistic, serving every family, yeah? addressing different needs that might exist in different communities. In addition to mapping, we also supported review uh, uh, of the CPMS uh, online course, specifically focusing on the standard 16. Um, uh, we also, uh, had a webinar with a special guest from UNICEF on equip toolkit for the uh, for the task force members. In the pipeline for this year is a webinar on the global making, mapping, presenting it to the alliance. This will happen later this year. Um, for the next year, 2022, uh, we hope to uh, hold more webinars, and we uh, really would like to brainstorm on what what topics would be important to uh, to put a light on this year. Um, we also uh, planning to uh, roll out the mapping and uh, support uh, any collaboration on this, support uh, any organization that, that is planning to use it, but also to collect and document uh, the use of it, the use of different interventions as well. Uh, and we will continue research on family strengthening delivery systems and programmatic approaches. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. Um, yeah, um, now you will see um, a link in your chat box um, you know, that will lead you to a group map. There we really want um, you to think with us and contribute your ideas. What do you think? What needs to be done? What are the ways 
for prevention or addressing various issues. And you will see separate spaces for um, corporal punishment, for gender-based violence, uh, for child labor, for family separation. So please put, um, uh, you can take this plus, push this plus sign and add your ideas what, in which ways you can prevent or address these issues. And Sarah and Cliff, I will um, give the floor to you to facilitate and see what people are coming up with. Back to you. I'll hand it back to you, Cliff. Thank you. Um, so it's already uh, explained there. Uh, we'll be very eager to hear from everyone uh, what are some of the things that we could be doing um, and, and how we can strengthen uh, uh, the work in relation to prevention of uh, family separation. Um, and, and, the, and if you can think more broadly, the, the connection and the linkages between uh, our two task force, uh, that will also be quite, uh, quite useful for us to, um, I mean, get more ideas and, uh, and also explore together with you. Is there a way to zoom? Was there a particular quadrant you wanted to zoom in on first, corporal punishment? Or I, I could probably go into uh, the link and uh, open it on on the web browser, right? Yeah, that way I've okay. just opened it on the browser. It's much easier to read that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I can I can zoom in my screen, but. Uh... Yep, yeah, just click next to the plus ah, sign good. in any of the quadrants and uh, add your ideas. So uh, I can I'll speak to the ways to prevent family separation uh, and, and uh, hand it over to Sarah to look at some of the others as well. Uh, we can work on it together. Uh, so I, I see quite interesting uh, points here. Uh, of course, ensuring basic needs are provided to families uh, as a way to prevent. And I think also uh, thinking out a bit loud here, it would also uh, be quite relevant to uh, families who are caring for unaccompanied separate children or families who are being reunified with unaccompanied and separated children. Um, Certainly identifying root causes is uh, quite critical. Not all separation occurs uh, in, the, in the heat of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of flight, right? Uh, um, some are planned, uh, some even uh, we as humanitarian actors are uh, in a way contributing to this. Uh, so it will be important to look at root causes. Uh, Yeah, so again, I see another point on understanding uh, what drives uh, family separation. A uh, combination of economic uh, strengthening, positive parenting, peer support, uh, absolutely. So uh, we'll be eager to, of course, uh, explore this together with you uh, in the breakout room. Uh, Sarah, if you want to come in. Thanks, Cliff. I'm going to zoom in on um, beyond ways to prevent family separation, to look at some of the issues that we know, even when families are not separated, uh, but they can, um, they can be facing very difficult situations, which put children at risk, as well as parents and caregivers at risk. So let's also look at ways to prevent gender-based violence, ways to prevent child labor, and, um, and then I'll hand it back to Cliff on the issue of corporal punishment. So um, on your, your suggestions on ways to prevent gender-based violence include uh, to understand the social norms and work around how it contributes to the prevalence of GBV, to set up rapid response structures for prevention and response at the community level, to understand the root causes of GBV and develop programs that enable the existing child protection system to address those root causes, working with boys and men to empower them to co-lead activities, involving youth 
both boys and girls as advocates against gender-based violence and encouraging child protection actors to systematically utilize gender analysis when designing programs and use the findings to design programs. I would add to this coordination across the sectors. There are so many ways that we can address the root causes of gender-based violence and respond to the impact of gender-based violence. When we integrate a GBV approaches, not only into child protection, but also into education, into um, early childhood, into health and nutrition programming. Um, and the more we coordinate, uh, the better our, our outcomes will be. And obviously these are, these are all issues that not only are relevant for family separation, but also for the broader family strengthening agenda. So let's flip over to ways to prevent child labor. So we start with preventing family separation, having a supportive parenting approach, cash transfers. Um, we saw both conditional cash transfers for education as well as cash transfers that I assume are non-conditional. Um, both have demonstrated quite significant impact on preventing family separation and improving the well-being of, of the household with and without conditions. Um, understanding the risk factors within communities, families, and for children, identifying root causes, and advocating for longer-term funding. Obviously, funding uh, is one of the largest challenges that we have across all of our work, um, but hopefully a lot of the advocacy that we're doing here today is going to help promote um, more investment, more in attention, and more collaboration across the sectors. Over to you, Cliff, for corporal punishment. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, quite a lot of interesting ideas here from, uh, from everyone. Uh, certainly, uh, it is one of the uh, protection issues for children uh, within families. Um, and, and certainly unaccompanied separated children do experience this uh, and we, we know that instances of uh, discriminatory treatment uh, is, is also uh, quite a uh, quite a factor um, often we think in terms of uh, this being a cultural practice and uh, quite difficult to address uh, but uh, uh, but we also seen that it's a, it's a it, it happens across uh, multiple regions and uh, locations as well. Um, so in terms of some ideas that you have shared, uh, one of uh, you mentioned here is through public and peer education, um, strengthening attachment and communication amongst uh, family members and uh, between uh, caregivers and children. And this can of course happen at multiple levels, uh, not only within the families and targeting the families, but also uh, engaging with, uh, uh, as, as mentioned here, faith leaders, uh, schools, and uh, and communities as, as a whole. Um, emotional intelligence training, I uh, will be interesting to hear more about that if we have the chance. Um, Positive discipline is often talked about as a, as a way forward uh, in, in ways of uh, addressing uh, or preventing corporal punishment. Uh, that's something quite important, I think. Um, raising awareness on child rights. And uh, this is, I mean, I think uh, we, we have an interesting track record here. Uh, I mean, that was uh, one of the ways in which uh, much of child protection was done in the past, uh, while it is, uh, something that can continue uh, we need to think more broadly also um i think another key thing here is identifying root causes again uh not or not all uh instances of corporal punishments are linked to some culture or tradition right uh, different uh, factors come into play and needs to be addressed so uh, thank you so much everyone for contributing uh, here and hopefully we'll carry this forward to the discussion in uh, in uh, the breakout rooms. Over. Thank you, Cliff and Sarah, and thank you everybody for contributing. Absolutely, there are a lot of things to discuss, and uh, looking at the root causes will be important to understand why these issues exist and how to prevent or how to respond to these situations. Um, now, um, 
friends, we have an opportunity to go deeper into various directions that um, our task forces shared and discuss specific um, issues related to, to each of the task forces. So you will be, um, you will have an option to choose between um, family strengthening task force or joining unaccompanied and separated um, children task force. Uh, we will have these two breakout rooms, make your choice, um, go to the um, room that uh, you, you would like to join and uh, we will have about 20 minutes for the more in-depth discussion in the breakout rooms. And then we will come back. Yeah, so thank you everybody for live discussions in your breakout rooms. And um, yeah, I think we have uh, new ideas how we will continue collaborating together, um, learning about um, tools and approaches for this too. Um, task forces, please engage and you have um, contacts for both task groups. Um, please, task force leads, you can uh, put in the chat box again your emails um, and contact information for people to join and reach out if they'd like. That's it. And thank you very much for participating in this session. And I will hand over to Audrey to help us with the last comments for the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine, and thank you uh, to the Family Strengthening Task Force Leads and the Unaccompanied and Separated Children Task Force Leads. I'm searching a little bit. My co-coordinator, I feel lonely. We, you, we often close together. And so, honey, wave. Ha, here yeah. it is. <laughs> feeling better now. So um, the floor is yours. What are your takeaways of uh, today's session? Takeaways, great. Thanks everyone for sticking around until this hour. So first of all, apologies because I had to step away for uh, a side event that we were organizing together with a few other partners like UNHCR, CPAR, Global Partnership, WHO and others um, as part of the Solution Summit with a focus on prevention of violence against children in humanitarian settings. Um, so I did not get to appreciate every single presentation, but um, the few, a few takeaways uh, up from, from my side and from my colleague's side who helped me pull this together. First of all, wow. Even Audrey and I get amazed every single time that we're in this annual meeting and we just see everything together because we know a lot of what you guys are doing, but seeing it all together, it just really amazes us every single time. So really kudos to all of, all of the working group task force speeds, but also all the agencies that are behind it. Because as we all know, the Alliance is nothing without the agencies that are supporting all this, all its work. Um, some great ideas on collaboration emerged throughout the, the day, but particularly one that, that I witnessed was uh, through Audrey's masterful um, show womanship. <laughs> Some uh, interesting uh, ideas for collaboration between the Advocacy Working Group and CAFAC Task Force. And the last thing I would say is, is just observing colleagues and the level of expertise that exists within, within the Alliance, again, the Alliance is a collective, so it's not, it's not the Alliance that has the expertise, it's all of you guys bringing the expertise, those that are engaged in the work of the Alliance on a daily basis, and those that are contributing to specific pieces. It's just really um, incredible, incredible to just watch the level of expertise and, and admire this collection of experts that have come together. Um, and the, the last thing I would say is, is about the, the Solution Summit event that I mentioned in the beginning. It was a really interesting um, conversation. Um, we had several donors and governments present, uh, and it was specifically targeted to them to advocate on the issue of prevention. Um, we had the US government who co-hosted the event, who, who made a very strong pitch to other governments and donors um, to, to prioritize prevention. So it was a really great event as well. 
And back to you, Audrey. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I can only um, echo your, your words. Uh, this afternoon has been amazing and, uh, and almost a little bit overwhelming. And I see uh, Joanna comment in the chat saying that now we need to find a way to really, you know, put under the spotlight and disseminate all this wonderful work that you guys are doing. And, uh, and some of your presentations have given uh, good ideas uh, to, to the knowledge management folks, but as well to me, I mean, I was, I was a little bit sad not to hear the end of the story for the child labor passports because I was in the other room, uh, but I, I, I really love the idea of pitching um, this way. We won't take any longer of your time. Um, you will see in the chat, there is the evaluation of the debt. Please try to fit it. Yesterday we had seven people only and I can see we are 54 still um, online. So we would really appreciate to, to hear your feedback because this helps us every year to, to try to get better. So for you to enjoy more of the conference. So let's do this. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that I'm very impressed that we are still 54 uh, because we are fully aware it's it's long spending the, the week behind the computer, listening to the different uh, presentation that we miss the face to face, but we still have one day to go tomorrow, Friday, and it's not a day in the week, it's going to be a special day tomorrow because for the first time within the Alliance and potentially within the sector, we are going to open the discussion on climate change, climate crisis, sorry, climate justice and child protection. And I think it's, an, it's a discussion that we wanted to have for, for the past few years. Often it came up as, as a theme for the annual meeting and it was very close to the top all the time and what is happening around the world these days in terms of uh, climate is really of a concern because we know children are impacted to that. So we have planned a lot of uh, good speakers, good session hopefully. So we are giving you a um, rendezvous tomorrow at 1.30 European time, 1.30 CET time, for what we hope will be uh, the discussion that will kick off the work that the Alliance uh, looking forward uh, would like uh, to do when it comes to climate crisis, um, climate justice and child protection. And added to that, it's part of our new strategic plan that everyone obviously has downloaded yesterday. Uh, so, you know, take it with you, read this ch chapter and see you tomorrow, 1.30 CET time. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.